Hey, Kevin. Hey. What you doing? I am fixing to use a mill. What's a mill? What's a mill? What do you think, honey? Do you want to buy one? Sure. But I know, have to know how to use it first, right? Well, that helps. Yeah, it does help. Do you know how to use it? I don't know how to use it. Okay, let's back way up then and let's start over. So, these are my friends, Andy and Stacy, and they're down from Prescott visiting, and I was just kind of showing them around the shop a little bit, and they caught the, they caught the bridge port over here and said, you know, what the heck is that thing? So, let's just walk around the bridge port a minute or two, and I'll kind of show you what this thing does. Bridgeport, it's a great name. It's the city I'm from. Yay! <laughs> this is a milling machine. It's not a drill press, although it does do that. You know, it will, it will actually function like a drill press and drill holes, but it's more for machining. So you would put a piece of metal in the vise, or there's a big turntable that can go on here, so you can rotate this piece of metal around to work on it. But it's more for straight cuts from side to side or from front to back you know so that is that is x and y and then you've got z which is the height of it because eddie give this one a turn so this raises the knee this is called the knee on the machine it raises the whole knee which has the whole table which carries the vise and then this is you know like a chuck off of a drill press and it would just fit right up inside here. At the top of the machine is something called a quill. It's just a really, really long bolt. And it just screws in. It goes all the way down through the machine and it screws into that tapered shaft that was on the end of the chuck itself. So now you could tighten that up just a little. You could put a drill in here, put your work in, and you could set it up like a drill press. This is the tapered shaft that goes up inside the, the quill, you know, the, I think it's called a quill, inside the, the mill itself. And then it's just threaded in here where the quill reaches all the way down and screws in, tightens it up inside. As far as the milling function of it goes, there are other types of collets that fit up inside there. And again, they're threaded and they come in different sizes, different diameters, to hold the different style of end mills. This is called an end mill. This one is a roughing end mill because of the little grooves that are on here. It allows it to cut a lot quicker. And then you've just got bigger versions. You know, this is also a roughing mill. This is an end mill. And then they're multiple flutes like this one is and then there's some that only have two flutes you know, those are for the softer metals like, like aluminum you know this one is more for steel hundreds of different kinds what would you I, use these two for if i was going to take like this stack of different pieces and let's say they were all misshapen rather than they're all exactly the same but let's say I wanted to make them all the same shape. I could come over in here and with these clamps that are on the wall behind Eddie, those all fit into these slots that are on the table and I can hold this metal down right onto the table itself. Then I would come in with the roughing end mill because it cuts quicker. And I could come in and trace right along this edge, cut all of this excess off but it would still leave kind of a rough surface. So then I would change to this end mill, which would leave a much cleaner surface, come in and make one more pass, clean it up nice and smooth and straight. So, so that's why you'd have the two different ones. That surprisingly looks exactly like one I use for woodworking or carving. Very sure. similar, very similar. Just, you know, a much bigger motor, you know, much stronger gears inside, you know, a, a, a much slower machine, I think, than what you would use for well, woodworking. I was actually talking about a hand carver, like a four machine. Oh, okay, machine, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And a die grinder. Yep. How often do those need sharp? How often do they need sharpening? Oh, boy. You know, if, as long as you keep a certain amount of cutting fluid, on them as they're running. 
as long as you don't just really get carried away and try to force it through. Run it at a real fast speed, try to just hog your way through it and get it done quickly, they'll last a long time. They, they really will. Try not to run them into the table. The table's hard. <laughs> you know, don't use them on stone or anything like that. But um, I sharpened maybe three of them in the time that I've had this machine. Uh, expensive. You know, 25 bucks, 30, 50, 100, 200, depending on the size. If one of them is high speed steel, it's going to be much cheaper than the ones that are solid carbide by like four or five times. You know, 20 bucks, 150 bucks kind of thing. Yeah, you know, big, big difference. But they last so much longer. This is, a, uh, this is about a mid 70s machine. So it's an old grandpa. It's been around a while. But everything you see on here is all hand moved, hand actuated, hand, you know, everything is done by hand. It does have a power feed to run the quill up or down for like drilling, but I never use it. It's just as easy just to grab the handle and move it that way. And then the feeds on the table, both left, right, forward, back, up, down, all mechanical, all done by hand. The newer machines, all computer controlled. They have motors on them. You sit there and punch buttons, you know, put some metal in it, hit the go button, go get you a cup of coffee, come back and watch the chips fly. Um, this machine I bought used, it was about $5,000. You know, the new computer controlled machines, they're up in the 25, 30, 40,000, know, depending on how many bells and whistles you get on them. But this will last my lifetime and I'll be able to pass it on to somebody else and they'll be able to get use out of it too. Maybe you could pass it on to Eddie. Well, that could happen. <laughs> Live a lot longer. <laughs> I'd like one a little sooner. This is just a few months away. <laughs> well, you never know. I might be getting a new computer-controlled one. Oh, I mean, sure. You know? like, the work you do. <laughs> yeah, make sure, yeah, make sure I got your address. You know? <laughs> so anyway, th that's just a basic look at what a, a mill is, you know, what a milling machine does. Uh, it takes up a lot of floor space. You know, this one runs on three-phase power instead of single phase. You know, it'll run on 220, which most every house has. And it will also run on 440, which you just have to change wiring up in the top. But it's got a little box on the back of it. It's called a rotary phase converter, which is a real handy little machine because it takes a single phase 220 and turns it into three phase 220. So the machine will still work, it just runs on single. Does this machine require a lot of maintenance? Almost none. Oh. Almost none. It's got little oil ports right here and here. So you, know, you give it a little dab of oil every time you use it. Uh, you try to wipe it down, try to keep it clean. It's got a little oil tank on the side with a little hand pump. So you put a, like a light cutting fluid in it, you know, a light motor oil in it, and every time before you go to use the machine, you'd reach down and grab that handle, give it one little pump. And that puts oil up on all the ways, up on all the sliding parts, makes it easier to slide. Okay. That's pretty much it. So what would you use this machine for then? Wow, what a great question. Well, you would use it for any kind of the machining things that you want to do. And again, you know, machining is you know, a flat surface, a, a cut a channel, a groove, uh, any kind of a, stra a straight square kind of a cut you want to make in a piece of metal or bore holes or, you know, repeatedly or something. Me, I use it for making art. So this actually started out as something like this. This is an aluminum billet. This is how it would have come out of the foundry. And I just took and cut off a chunk, you know, about the right size. And then literally just clamped it in the vise, in the, the vise this way to go ahead and make my square cut on the bottom of it with the mill, you know, with, with the, the roughing and mill. So now I've got something that I can index in the device. So I can grab it and hold it. I can turn it so I can work on all my different areas. And then I can even turn it to the side and clamp it in the side of the device for working on the side portions of it and be able to rotate it the way I needed to. 
So I use it to whittle. You know, I use it for some machine work. You know, if I'm cutting out multiple pieces for you know a sculpture that I'm making like these. I, if I cut these out by hand with my plasma cutter, of course they're going to wind up with little rough edges on them. So I'll cut them a little oversized, bring them over here, stack them up, get them as close as I possibly can, clamp them down, come back with a roughing mill, clean them up, trace them around, come back, clean them up one more time. Now they're exactly the same size. So when I go to build my sculpture, everything is going to fit. Everything is going to look correct rather than this one's a little big, that one's a little small, this one's got a nick in it, a gouge out of it. So Makes your job a little easier. Makes my job a lot easier. It, it really does. There's a lot of setup. Yeah, the, that's the, the gentleman who showed me how to run this machine was very specific about that. There's a lot of setup on this machine, like about 75% of the time that you actually use the machine is spent simply getting it clamped down, lined up straight, getting everything you know, lined up the way it's supposed to be. You make your cut, you drill your hole, you, know, you make your, your slot, whatever you're doing, and then you clean up all that mess reset it up to go ahead and do the next thing you want to do. That's why the new computer controlled ones are so much better because you can tell it, do this step, now do that step, now do this step. You know, and, and they'll even feed their own end mills in there. You know, they have a little arm that will take this one out and move out of the way and put a different one in to go do the next step. And then put a different one in to go do the next step. And you know, They're amazing to watch. They're really amazing to watch. So I hope that just kind of gives you a little hint, you know, as to what this thing is and, and what it might do. Why you should buy it. And, and why you should get one for Eddie's birthday. All right, all right. I'll get you one. Yes. <laughs> and I get a toaster, yes. <laughs> so uh, you guys are going to play. You're going to hang out and hang out and play with this machine. I'm going to go back to work. And you all, you know what to do. Go find that subscribe button. Give it a poke for me. I'll see you all next time. Say that again? If you want to. Okay. Keeping in mind you're going to go home with her tonight. <laughs> <laughs>